Hi, I'm Edward Andrews and I'm a member of the team who lead worship in three churches in Moray in Scotland. There's St Michael's Church Dallas, Rafford Parish Church and St Leonard's Parish Church in Forest. During the closure of the church because of the pandemic we have been conducting what we've been calling virtual worship. Of course, it isn't virtual worship, it's real worship because we are truly worshipping God. Now, while officially the churches can open, effectively it will be some time before we're fully going. And until then, and probably even after then, we will probably continue with some form of worship like this to lead in worship what now is a worldwide fellowship. Since lockdown, the people of God have been having to think hard about what it really means to be the people of God and what we're actually doing. And there's been a lot of very good, very thoughtful work done on these topics. The general conclusion is that in fact there isn't going to be a one-size-fits-all answer. People in different situations with different traditions are being called to be the people of God in different ways. We're called to reach out in different ways, serve in different ways, because effectively at long last, the people of God have discovered that there isn't just one way of doing church. And as we've been thinking about what we're doing, we've had all sorts of fairly heavy theological thoughts we discover that there are two main things which we do as the church. We talk about the teaching of Christ or we talk about teaching about Christ. But there's another way of doing it and that is as the people of God we consider how we develop our spirituality so that we can be the effective people of God working in the community with a spirituality which supports us. It was only when I looked at the lectionary that I discovered that today we're being called in that direction. Romans 8 very much talks about us being an effective people of God. So let us gather our thoughts for worship as we listen and perhaps join in with the hymn Come, now is the time for worship. The words will be shown on the screen but if you want to you can find it as hymn 196 in the church hymnary, fourth edition.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we gather as your people in different places and in different ways. We come to you from different traditions with different relationships with you. Unite us spiritually in worship that we may be fed with your word proclaimed about your word incarnate, Jesus Christ our Lord. We use this opportunity to contemplate on how we live our lives. We think of your demands and the example of Christ. Without being depressed about it, we see the vast areas of failure where we miss the mark. Help us to realise where we get things wrong, how we make the wrong decisions, how we let what is a short-sighted self-interest take the place of the right or the generous, how we ignore your law, how we're faithless in service. We ask for your forgiveness and that you will give us the grace that we may have the strength to serve you in love and obedience. Loving God who seeks to support us, if only we put our trust in you. Grant that we may respond to your love in faith. Eternal God, author, author of our faith and end of our pilgrimage, guide us by your word and spirit amid all perils and temptations that we may not wander from your way nor stumble in the darkness but may finish our course in safety and come to our eternal rest in you through the grace and merits of jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever. Listen for the word of God. First of all, as is contained in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 44, reading from verse 6 to verse 8. The reading is from the New International Version of the Bible. This is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people and what is yet to come. Yes, let them foretell what will come. Do not tremble, do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God beside me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. And again, listen for the word of God. This time as it's contained in the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 8, reading from verse 12 to verse 25. And the reading is taken from the J.B. Phillips translation. So then, my brothers and sisters, you can see that we've no particular reason to feel grateful to our sensual nature or to live life on the level of the instincts. Indeed, that way of living leads to certain spiritual death. But if, on the other hand, you cut the nerve of your instinctive actions by obeying the spirit, you're on the way to real living. All who follow the leading of God's Spirit are God's own children. 
nor are you meant to relapse into the old slavish attitude of fear. You've been adopted into the very family circle of God and you can say with a full heart, Father, my Father, the Spirit himself endorses our inward conviction that we really are the children of God. Think what that means. If we are his children, we share his treasures and all that Christ's claim as his will belong to all of us as well. Yes, if we share in his suffering, we shall certainly share in his glory. In my opinion, whatever we may have to go through now is less than nothing compared with the magnificent future God has planned for us. The whole creation is on tiptoe to see the wonderful sight of the sons of God coming into their own. The world of creation cannot as yet see reality, not because it chooses to be blind, but because in God's purpose it has been so limited. Yet it has been given hope, and the hope is that in the end the whole of created life will be rescued from the tyranny of change and decay and have its share in that magnificent liberty which can only belong to the children of God. It's plain to anyone with eyes to see that at the present time all created life groans in a sort of universal struggle. And it's plain too that we, who have had a foretaste of the Spirit, are in a state of painful tension while we wait for that redemption of our bodies which will mean that at last we have realised our full inheritance in Him. We were saved by this hope. But in our moments of impatience, let us remember that hope always means waiting for something that we haven't yet got. But if we hope for something we cannot see, then we must settle down to wait for it in patience. And now we will reflect on our epistle reading in the hymn Loving Spirit, hymn 597.
we're living in strange times. We're no longer completely locked down, nor has the impossible happened and we're back to what things were. And as lockdown is eased, we look back at a strange time. Let's face it. We didn't do what we said we'd do. We haven't written the great novel or learnt the language or done the things that we always said we would do if we had time. Perhaps we've got proficient in solitaire or some version of Candy Crush. Perhaps we've done a bit of baking. Perhaps we've had our admiration of teachers enhanced after an experience of homeschooling. We have survived. It's the lesson of survival that has made me think not about the usual diet of the church, the teachings about Christ or the teachings of Christ, but how we, as the people of God, can really work at being his people. For the first time, I think, in my ministry, I have not had a gospel reading. That's because I wanted to concentrate on our Old Testament, Psalm and Epistle. The writer of the part of the book of Isaiah from which we took our reading was writing from a a very difficult time. He was writing to people who really were in captivity. They had been transported to Babylon and yet he could tell them not to tremble, not to be afraid. And that is the word of the Lord to us. And we discover that we have to be his witnesses. Of course, there are so many ways in which Christians can be God's witnesses. Supporting people in their isolation. Shopping. Ringing up people and making sure they're all right. All the tasks that people have been doing. Supporting people in prayer. But what is supporting the people of God as we act out our great calling to serve in the community? And this is where we find ourselves confronted by Paul. Now today we're reading Paul filtered through the translation of J.B. Phillips, an Anglican priest who translated the Greek New Testament into what was then modern English for his Bible class, which met in an air raid shelter during the Blitz. I I rediscovered this translation of the Bible a few weeks ago. It was radical, almost subversive in my youth, and I'm using it as a way in which we can escape from the well-loved phrases, which we may know so well that there's no longer real challenge in them. because challenge has to be the key word in our thoughts today. We're leaving the old world of lockdown behind. In lockdown, the, the churches, at least the churches which are worth anything, moved out of the buildings and into the community, whether it was their members working in food banks or taking part in other community endeavors, We've seen the people of God do useful things in the community as humanitarians. But now we have to work at building our lives as Christians. Against the background of the virus, we've been living in fear. And while lockdown has been eased, we know the virus is still out there. And what is so relevant for us today is that Paul is speaking of a time of suffering and of fear and that we as Christians live in attention. Verses 22 and 23 
all created life groans in a sort of universal struggle. And it's plain too that we who have a foretaste of the Spirit are in a state of painful tension. And we, as the people of God, have to live through this time and not only show people the reality of the faith, because the church is where the kingdom of God breaks into the lives of the world, but we have to face up to the threats which there are at this time. The threat of the destruction of the environment. The threat which there is to society of politicians careless of the truth and who lead people astray. The social inequality. Perhaps social breakdown. All the effects of the pandemic which we all will have to live through, economic, social, political and religious. And it's against this background that as the people of God we live with the Christian hope. As Paul says, we were saved by this hope. But in our moments of impatience, let us remember that hope always means waiting for something that we haven't yet got. But if we hope for something we cannot see, then we must settle down to wait for it in patience. But for this to work, not only as a people, for Christianity is nothing if it's not a faith as a community, but as individuals, we have to work at it. We have to get our prayer lives under control, to listen what God is saying to us and about his word made flesh in his word revealed. We have to get ourselves spiritually fit so we can live in the new, strange, threatening world. We have to be secure in the knowledge of the power and care of God in our lives, as affirmed by the psalmist. So let us listen as the psalmist affirms the eternal relationship which God has for us and trust that his care is around us, as we find it in part of Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. 
test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Let us pray. Eternal God, we would come to you bringing you our concerns, our fears, our petitions. We look at the world, your creation, our home. We realise that as a species we've misused it we haven't treated it with the respect with which we should. This time of reimagining, give to us as the world community the vision to see what we should be doing with your environment now and in the future. We look at human relationships. We bring to you our individual relationships. Give us the grace to live in peace and charity with our neighbours. And help us to unravel the real meaning of your command to love our enemies. Open our hearts to the demands of justice that we may understand the nature of real justice while we're open to your mercy on us in Christ. Hear me, Lord, and draw near. In mercy, listen to my plea. Loving God, we look around the world at the little reported troubles, at the locust emergency in East Africa, how the Amazon still burns, the proxy war in Libya and in the Yemen. We ask you to give to the leaders of the world community the strength and the openness to seek to work on these problems. Hear me, Lord, and draw near. In mercy, listen to my plea. Lord Jesus, you told us to bring our prayers to you. And we bring before you our individual concerns and worries in the silence of our hearts. Hear me, Lord, and draw near. In mercy, listen to my plea. Eternal Father, at this time when many have been affected by untimely death and we gratefully remember how fortunate our community has been with few deaths from the virus so far. We remember with love those who have passed beyond the veil and who found the rest in you and ask you that when our days on earth are done, we too may join in with your company, too great to number, who join at your throne, redeemed through the death of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. When I sing or listen to hymn 549, how deep the Father's love for us. Remain faithful to the faith delivered to us by Christ, trusting in the power of the Father and the love of the Son and the action of the Holy Spirit to be the people of God. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you, now and forevermore. Amen.